Welcome everybody and happy Mary Magdalene feast day, July 22nd, 2022. What a special day this is. It's uh, glorious as it's the 22nd of 2022. I think it's pretty cool. Um, so I just wanted to share my knowledge and personal relationship that I have with Magdalene. Um, I've come across um, a lot of people in the spiritual community who associate with Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel, a lot of archangels, and I've never really associated with anybody. Um, yeah, I've channeled multiple beings, but I've never like claimed to be a part of anyone. Uh, Magdalene describes this as uh, the ones that are attracted to, for instance, Archangel Michael. You have their essence encoded on you. So you were a part of the sacred womb that uh, Archangel Michael or Michelle, whatever one masculine feminine you want to com uh, communicate with, because um, you, you always have an Archangel with the masculine and the feminine. Uh, so with that, their essence, you were, when your essence was created and sparked, like attracts like energy. So their energy was attracted to the sacred womb of a certain Archangel or Ascended Master or uh, being, whatever you want to call it. So uh, when your essence was attracted in, in the womb of that archangel or being, you were, your essence was encoded with their, uh, with their essence. So in essence, like, it's kind of like you belong to that family or that tribe or whatever. Um, but again, I've just kind of been like a loner, kind of like, a, like, like, you know, I kind of merge with a little bit here, a little bit there, but I never really associated with anything. Um, if anybody of you are aware of human design, um, I am a manifester, make up 9% of the world. And Magdalene describes this as manifestors don't belong to anybody. They don't belong to a group. They don't belong to an entity. And so I was like, well, that's interesting because, you know, I work and I've dedicated my life to Magdalene. I've dedicated my life's work to her. Um, but I don't belong to her. Her essence is not encoded onto me. She chose me. She chose me when I was three days old. Um, my father, um, who, when I say my father, it's not like my eternal father, but he's been like my father in many, many lifetimes is Sanat Kumara. He's an Arcturian and he assigned Magdalene to me because we had uh, major teachings to bring forward and she was of the most ideal frequency for me to work with. Um, Hathor, originally uh, has been assigned to me as well. Like I've been a follower of Hathor's for many, many lifetimes. Um, we've worked together um, in star families and I love Hathor. So Hathor has been with me since birth, but Magdalene encoded her essence into me on day three um, because you need that encoding in order to properly channel. Um, now this is all mechanics, uh, but I didn't want to get too much into mechanics today, but that's how uh, I got associated with Magdalene, is that Sanat Kamara assigned her to me and she works with me now to bring forward teachings. Um, I don't personally get too wrapped up in historical data of Magdalene. That is not my forte. That is not why I'm here. If you want to learn historical information, I strongly and highly suggest you check out Kathleen McGowan. She's amazing. Her books really tell a pure tale of what's ha what happened with Magdalene. Now, of course, uh, while I was in France these past couple of months, um, the big word or phrase that came to me, and Kathleen used this herself, and uh, is it's an and universe. It is an and universe. So did Yeshua die on the cross? Yes and no. So it's like whenever I ask Magdalene about, oh, did you ever, you know, go to Egypt? Yes and no. It's an and universe. So there is no set in stone history of Magdalene that I will be bringing forward. Do I have my own beliefs? Absolutely. Uh, but this is because that's the timeline I'm on and the timeline I associate with. So what I know of Magdalene is that she was a priestess of Isis. She is a glorious teacher, and she was one of those special beings that came into life woke, as they say, came into life knowing she was more, knowing there was something different about her. In fact, her family even saw that she was different 
and enrolled her or initiated her into the Temple of Isis. This is where she uh, learned to be, got training to be a priestess. And through the priestess trainings, uh, they saw that she had a special uh, knack for uh, sexual energy, for working with sexual energy. So they also trained her in Hiros Gamos, which is sacred partnership. And uh, so she became a priestess and uh, a sacred sex teacher. So through these teachings, through the teachings of Isis, um, afterwards, uh, she wore a golden snake band on her arm. And um, people knew that this was of Isis. This was of sacred sex uh, initiation. Um, so obviously, with that, you're going to get labeled. Um, I believe this stemmed a little bit from why she got um, claimed to be a prostitute, which she was not. She was never a prostitute. She came from a very wealthy family. In fact, she was so wealthy that she actually funded part of Yeshua's uh, pilgrimage and ministry. Uh, so she was a major uh, source for income for their teachings. So no way, no shape, no form was she ever a prostitute, but she was initiated in sacred sex rituals. She wore the snake band representing that. And also she was an anointress. That was part of being a priestess of Isis is that you learn how to become and be anointed anointing others. This is why she's always seen with an alabaster jar and the alabaster jar was filled with spike nard. Um, we have a special spike nard that I sell. If anybody's interested, please DM me or message me. Um, but it's an Egyptian spike nard that uh, I feel is very, very close, or at least the closest I have found so far to the spike nard that she used. Um, so she was anointed. So there was sacred acts of anointing. This is also found throughout the Bible when she anointed his feet, you know, she uh, anointed his head and it's like, yeah, uh, Judas was like, why are you wasting that precious oil? And Yeshua was like, leave her alone. She's doing what she's meant to be doing. Uh, she was also a death doula. Tra another training in, as a priestess of Isis is she was a death doula. She knew how to do sacred death rites. This is why, uh, and as the partner and wife of Yeshua, uh, she was uh, there at the crucifixion. As a death doula, she had seen many deaths. She had been there to help souls cross over. And knowing the process of death, she was able to withstand. I'm sure it was still gut-wrenching to watch your love be uh, crucified up on that cross. Even if it was just for a short period, maybe he was brought down and survived. But again, I'm not here to preach that one way or another. It's an and universe. But still, to see a loved one up there is, I can imagine, just gut-wrenching, just horrible, horrible gut-wrenching. So, but she was trained as a death doula. So after the crucifixion, they brought him down off the cross and she was put into the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. Um, she and Mother Mary anointed him again, dressed him for death and prepared him for, for the burial. Again, a wife does this. This is also another inclination that she, yes, she was married to Yeshua. Uh, so after the crucifixion, um, I believe that her daughter that she had, so she had two children, she had actually three children, one with John the Baptist, uh, and then two with Yeshua. Her son ended up going to England with Mother Mary and Joseph of Arimathea, and her daughter stayed with her. And her and her daughter went to Egypt for a while after exile, um, when they were in exile and, you know, running from the Romans and even the apostles they had to hide from because the apostles, uh, they were, they were not kind, they were very, very cruel to her, especially Peter. Peter called her out and even in the Gnostic Gospel of Magdalene calls her out saying, who are you? Who are you to receive these teachings when we did it? So, I feel that she was, once she actually realized the hatred and the jealousy that a lot of the disciples had for her, her and her daughter went to Egypt to hide out for a while. And there, um, this is a new revelation, and please know that this is July 22nd, 2022. These teachings and findings, it's a living, breathing thing. It's a living, breathing teaching. 
So I'm constantly learning. So please take what you want and leave the rest. This is what I have learned on my journey so far. So I just came to the inclination that possibly, more than likely, uh, Sarah, her daughter, when they were in Egypt, also received the initiation into the Temple of Isis. Um, because if you're in hiding and you have nothing to do, why not? Um, and then after that, her and her daughter and a couple other women went to the southern France and began the, their ministry, where it was where they were able to be more open and free and teach the teachings of the way of love. So she went to southern France um, and in the whole Languedoc area, taught for the rest and remaining of her life. Um, some people say that she moved, went up to Scotland after France. I have not found uh, that information yet. I have not gone to Scotland yet, so I don't know 100%, but I do know she is deeply enriched in the Languedoc, Occitania area in southern France. She's alive. She's alive there. You can feel her there, and it's just magical. So she went and she taught and she seeked out certain temples, goddess temples that were there prior to the Romans coming in and uh, reutilizing. But she went to certain temples of goddesses, a temple of Isis, a temple of Diana, um, a, te a temple of Minerva, like so many beautiful goddesses that she went to the temples because she knew she would be safe there. Uh, so that was all through Southern France and she was just glorious and I'm bringing forward her teachings. So many people right now are feeling Magdalene, are connecting with her and I just, I just want to celebrate. I just want to celebrate all of us for a moment who is connecting with Magdalene and bringing forward her and her teachings and her history, however that looks like to you. Thank you. So what I'm bringing forward is the teachings of how our energetic bodies um, play into finding our soul purpose, play into how they help us develop spiritually, how you can strengthen your light body through your flow state. Uh, and th these are the many, many teachings that I will be going through forward um, classes and everything like that. I will be starting a Patreon group very soon um, on channelings, ask me anything. Um, oh, all the teachings on the 12 levels of the soul. And that will also be included in my book coming out early next year. The book is entitled Magdalene, a create tricks and flow and memoir. Um, I am working with a publishing team right now to get that book going. And also my amazing ghost writer, Gina Kegel, who if anybody needs a ghost writer for spiritual work, she is a sacred scribe. She's been my sacred scribe in many lifetimes. And I know that she's been a sacred scribe for some of you that are hearing this as well. So if you ever need your story to be told, but you don't have time or you feel like you can't get it right, trust in her, she's amazing. Uh, so that's who Magdalene was. Magdalene was a teacher. She was a prophetess. She was an oracle. She led the way for other women oracles and brought forward these ancient, sacred, deep spirituality teachings. And I am blessed to bring forward some of those. Um, and uh, her bringing forward her voice again and allowing her to channel through me. So I just wanted to congratulate her on her journey, celebrate her. Magdalene is phenomenal and superb. And I just, again, want to celebrate all of us who's working with her as well. And happy Magdalene Feast Day. I wish you all a beautiful and blessed day.